Hello, welcome back. In our last video, we have developed this flight search automation. And the flight search automation is basically going to take four data point, that is starting city, ending city, starting date, and ending date. And it will put those numbers in orbis.com and give you a price that is the minimum. Okay, so, so recall what we have asked you in the very first class that you are going to develop a framework or you develop a automation suite which is going to give you from the origin city of San Francisco to three different cities on two different starting date and ending date. That means we have total six combinations of starting city starting city, ending city, start date and end date. So, and in that case, if you have a automation like this, option one, what you can do, you can run this flight search in six different combinations of data and each time you find out a lowest price for a particular data set and you put that one yourself, you know, you note it down on a piece of paper. Say that's the first time, you know, you put P1. Second time, let's say from San Francisco to Chicago on a particular date is P1. And another date is say P2. Similarly, from San Francisco to Orlando is P3 in one date, on another date is P4. Similarly, San Francisco to Dallas is in one date is P5 and next date is P6. Then, whatever is the minimum out of this six prices, then that is what you are going to choose. To do that, in the existing IDE framework, whatever we have, we have to run this flight search six times. That is option one. Option two is that what you can do, you can copy this flight search and then create another test case. Let's say that is called flight search one. In flight search one, what you can do, you can put San Francisco to another, basically you change the data point. Okay, so what you're going to do, you're going to have flight search one up to flight search five. That means there are six flight search. Everything remains same. All the steps, whatever is remain same, only the value changes. And you run that one as a test suite. And whenever you click on this button, then all those things will run one after another and each of them will print in a log message some kind of echo, because of this echo command okay they will print out the price and you come and look at those things and then figure out what is the lowest price but all these two options whatever we discussed are not really elegant and also not really you know you are not really using whatever you learn in the very basic programming okay this problem whatever is that that this is just a data set or it's just a parameter so is there any way i can change this parameter on the runtime one script will be there but each of those parameters is going to run in a different time so 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 the the script is the flight search program is remain same but it will run six time and each of this time these things will read from some kind of notebook or notepad or excel file or whatever okay so in that case i will just run i will just write one one program and then i will run today for six data set tomorrow for 600 data sets okay unfortunately selenium id can't do that selenium id is just a prototype tool it is not for some serious programming or serious automation Okay, so whatever the, the kind of features that you are looking is some kind of looping statement. Okay, and then to compute this thing, you have to store in some kind of array and then you want to basically do an array setting and all these things. Those things, unfortunately, not available in Selenium IDE and that is exactly the bottleneck of Selenium IDE. Okay, and one more thing is that Selenium IDE is just going to work on Firefox. If you want to check this thing on Internet Explorer, then you cannot really drive using Selenium IDE. Okay, so therefore, 
these bottlenecks should be removed so that you can basically write your automation test framework. Actually, Selenium gives you two tools. If you look at my, uh, I think probably video number two, where I describe about Selenium tool sets. So I'm recalling from those videos. So I, I discussed that there is one thing called IDE. Another thing is called Selenium Remote Control or web driver and third thing that I called I, I, I told you that selenium grid okay so we discuss IDE and now we hit on a bottleneck and that bottleneck can be solved by selenium RC or web driver selenium RC and web driver they both give you a complete capability of a programming language and in the next video we are going to discuss about the Selenium RC and WebDriver and we'll see how those things fit into this picture.